Now, just a little warning before we begin, there will be major spoilers in this video for the first three episodes of Andor, so if you haven't seen them yet and you don't want anything ruined, it is a really good time to click away. Okay, so as I kind of talked about a little bit in my review yesterday, there is something or a few things kind of off or mysterious about the flashback sequences in Andor so far. Some things that, at face value, do not make any sense and even seem to conflict with established canon. And to get to them, or to explain and discuss them, let's do a quick sort of recap of those flashbacks to the planet Canari when Cassian was young. And they start with what is essentially a small village of kids, and only kids, that see a ship of some kind crash landing not far from them. These kids then basically put on war paint and make ready for battle, implying that they've likely had encounters with off-worlders before, and that they didn't go so well, that they weren't good people who showed up and probably did bad things. And by the fact that, again, all of the adults are missing, it seems to imply off-worlders have taken or killed all of the adults at some previous point. In one of the next flashbacks, we then come across a huge strip mine, one that seems to be abandoned. This then tells us, or allows us to guess, that whatever happened to the adults of this village has something to do with this strip mine. And likely they were either killed resisting the off-worlders who came to take their resources or who were ruining their environment, or they were maybe enslaved and died working or died in an accident of some kind, something along those lines, which then further explains why the kids are going to attack whoever just crashed on their planet and who they probably assume is associated with those who ran those mines. Next, the group of kids come upon the crashed ship, and from the uniforms worn by those on the ship, we can see they were Separatists. They have the logo right on them, which seems to imply this is taking place during the Clone Wars, though Cassian's age and backstory is an issue with that being the case, and more on that in a bit. Either way, they are presented as Separatists, and after one of them turns out to still be alive and shoots one of the kids in the back, well, the other kids don't take too well to that, and they retaliate and end up killing him with blow darts. After he's dead and they check on their friend and find out that she is indeed sadly dead, they all run away except for Cassian, who instead goes into the ship and soon enough he gets angry and starts to smash it apart, which is when Marva, his future adoptive mother, and her partner Clem show up and before finding him, they talk about how they have to hurry up because a Republic ship is coming, further implying this is taking place during the Clone Wars. Which leads to the interesting question of who exactly shot down the Separatist ship in the first place if the Republic ship is coming for cleanup duty and is still quite some distance away after it took quite a while for the kids to initially get there. I mean, how exactly did they, Marva and Clem, get here before them? Now granted, yes, there's quite a bit of time, so anything is possible, but did they know the Separatist ship was going to be shot down here and at this time? Or did they do it themselves to steal the goods inside and now the Republic is somehow responding? Though again, that doesn't explain why it took so long for them or anyone to get here. Keeping in mind the kids do have to travel there across, I don't know, several miles at the very least. And if they didn't shoot it down, then again, who exactly did shoot down this ship? But setting those interesting questions aside for just a moment, they, Marva and Clem, find Cassian on the ship, and Marva wants to take him because she's fearful of what the Republic will do to him, and both she and Clem agree they will kill him for some reason. Which I don't get. The Republic will kill this kid because um, a Separatist ship was shot down and crashed on their planet, and they, him and his people, Cassian and the other kids, they even killed one of them, they killed a Separatist, that somehow is a death sentence by the Republic, killing the enemy. But wait, that's not exactly what Marva says. That's not who Cassian and the other kids apparently killed. He's got people here! Yeah, people who've just killed a Republic officer. It'll be open season here the moment that frigate lands. Ah! <laughs> yes, you heard that right. Marva just said they, Cassian and the other kids, killed a Republic officer, not a Separatist. Meaning this is either a mistake in the writing, or a mistake with the logo that was used, it was supposed to be a Republic one, or she, Marva, doesn't know what she's talking about exactly. Or maybe, and most likely what is hopefully the case, is that these are Republic officers posing as Separatists in order to frame them, frame the Separatists, for something they were about to do, which by the looks of it was using poison on something or someone or someplace, considering there is or was some strange gas on the ship, that they even mentioned, Marva and Clem talk about, that it has dissipated, and that even some of the people on the ship have turned yellow. 
This would further explain why the Republic was relatively far away and apparently not the ones who shot down the ship. Again, if they shot it down, why did it take them so long, enough for kids to travel miles to get to the ship? Why did it take them so long to find the wreckage? So more than likely, the Separatists learned about some sort of shady Republic plot and shot down the ship and took off before another Republic ship could show up. Now Republic forces are coming to cover their tracks to destroy any and all evidence, including killing many locals who got involved. And somehow Marva and Clem knew about all of this and that it was going to happen, or maybe they are Separatists themselves, who knows. Moving on, another issue, albeit a kind of minor one, is if this is indeed happening during the Clone Wars, which all evidence points to, it's that Cassian is or looks too old in the flashbacks. He looks like he's maybe 12 or so, and yet, according to what's been established elsewhere, Cassian was born in 26 BBY, or 26 years before the Battle of Yavin, which means since the Clone Wars ended in 19 BBY, he'd be about 7 at the end of the Clone Wars. There was also an interview with Diego Luna from not long ago that I talked about on my second channel, and I wish I could remember the exact interview, but he said he'd be playing a 21-year-old Cassian at the start of the show. Which makes sense because the show says right at the start that this is happening or taking place or starting in 5 BBY. Meaning, yeah, he should be 21 right now when we factor in what we've learned elsewhere. Though that elsewhere is only visual encyclopedias and such. Never has his age or when he was born been established in story, you could say. Beyond him saying in Rogue One that he's been in the fight since he was six years old, and though he could technically mean any fight or any war in the whole galaxy, I think or would assume he means the Clone Wars. We even have in his backstory, again taken from Star Wars encyclopedias or the visual dictionary for Rogue One, that his father was killed at the Karadia Military Academy during a protest against the expansion of Republic militarism, and that, though not a formal separatist himself and or backed an insurrection cell at a very young age by tossing rocks and bottles at Republic walkers and clone troopers. It also says in these visual dictionaries or encyclopedias that he was born on Fest, which is actually now we know his cover story. So I'm going to assume if they want to in any way, shape, or form hold true to this backstory, when it's clear he was born on Canari and that his parents were probably killed because of something associated with the mine we see, that his timeline has been shifted to make him older now, and the in the fight since he was six years old comment will be in reference to some sort of resistance his people put up against whoever was strip mining their planet, which pretty much needs to have happened pre-Clone Wars now if he's going to be around 12 years old during or towards the end of the Clone Wars, as I think we're seeing in the series, and keeping in mind the Clone Wars only lasted for three years. I also think the father that dies fighting the Republic or protesting in a military academy and being executed for it, as mentioned in the lore books, the one that Luthien Rail knows about in the show and mentions, that it's going to turn out to be Clem. I think he's going to be like an adoptive father to him, and we'll even see that execution right in the series. We have gotten a glimpse of some type of execution being carried out by clone troopers in one of the trailers. And to be clear, no, I'm not really complaining about this possible shift in the timeline. I actually think it makes sense in this particular case. I mean, Diego Luna is over 40 years old these days, and he's supposedly playing a 21-year-old in Andor right now. And though granted he looks fantastic for his age, he pulls off a much younger man quite well, nor does it really matter that much if the actor looks the exact correct age he's supposed to be playing, which you could even say the same thing about the young actor playing him. He may look 12, but perhaps he's playing Cassian at 6 or 7 years old. Either way, I think it makes sense to just say Cassian is older than he was initially said to be in the lore books or the visual dictionaries. I mean, it changes nothing about the story, and if you're going to overwrite anything, overwrite those type of books, because a lot of them, a lot of the stuff in them, including Cassian's backstory, it never appears in story, and it's just put into those books to give some backstory or extra depth for the heck of it, in order to just sell the books. That said, I am very curious how everything will get explained with the crashed ship that, um, again, might not have been Separatist, considering what Marva said about killing a Republic officer. And I mean, again, why would the Republic come and kill a bunch of kids who just happened to be there and happened to kill an enemy officer, unless the Republic was trying to hide something? Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think is going on here. Did they make a mistake in the story, or is something much larger taking place? Whatever the case may be, leave your comments below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.